Hi, it's Nancy with Garden Scroll. The Forsythias are losing their pretty yellow color. There's still some left, but there's a lot of green coming through. So this will be the last week that we have the most likely. Um, our daughter has been helping us clean out the garden and, garden, and it has made it go a lot faster than it would have if we would have just been doing it ourselves. Uh, I'm so ready to get it all finished, but I'm very excited now because we will be finished with it before very long now, for sure. Um, I wish we could finish it today, and we may, but I'm not sure how much time we'll get to spend on it today either, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> either way, it won't be long before we get it finished. Uh, I, I forgot what I was going to say so but uh, the tulips are blooming a few of them are uh, just so exciting to see spring feel it in the air oh that's what I was going to say we're we are um, going to have another cold spell someone said that it may freeze but when I watch the weather uh, report yesterday it did say that uh, it showed it to be 34 as low as it was going to go so hopefully that'll be the case and it won't actually freeze because oh my there's so much green now <laughs> it needs to be cleaned out and I did purchase a few items from Horse Creek Nursery when, nursery when I was there several actually and from Ace I got a few plants from the Ace Nursery I really like their little nursery they have uh, the little four packs and I prefer a four pack or a six pack even which sometimes Walmart has so so um, I don't count those out by any means um, and this is the flowering almond just really looking good this morning. Our little seed box has uh, green coming up all through it. Um, I, I sure don't want it to freeze it out now, even though I'll definitely have to thin some of this out at some point. There's a little sprig of grass growing up there. See what's behind this. I'm not sure. Something's coming up. I think these may actually be some hollyhocks. I tried to plant some double hollyhocks because all mine have gone to single hollyhocks, which I like. I like them all, but I do like a variety of different kinds too. And I'm pretty sure these all are. Um, petunias that are coming up here and then I know this looks horrible it's scraggly and I will come out here and, and take a bunch of these old dusty millers out but why I leave them is because sometimes one of them will live like this one right here and then this one is coming up from the from the root I'll just have to snap that off and um, or snip it off and it'll go again now this one probably won't might there's green right there but 
uh, most of it is dead so I'll have to make a decision on that remember what this little plant is called but it sure is pretty in the springtime uh, and I know I planted some there and I planted some in the back and I, I need to figure out what they are but they're, they're very pretty even if they just bloom in the spring which I'm not sure how long they bloom but that pretty little yellow is definitely a welcome sight in the spring and then even if it that's all it blooms that pretty green would be nice the rest of the season things have changed a lot since the last time I did a post while we've been working cleaning out the garden it's just been continuing to grow and now the hosses that were just little nubbins are beginning to unfurl and come up. You can see some of them are still pretty much just the little nubs, but uh, they'll be coming up, opening up soon, I'm pretty sure. I still haven't had time to uh, get these little boxes all filled out. Pretty soon, hopefully, they'll all be like this one little seed. And I've had them like that before, but last year they got two uh, freezes and I just never did get them refilled and going again. I had a, a snail problem which I may still have but I hope I hope I've got it under control a bit. I've been putting coffee and coffee grounds out here all winter off and on so hopefully it'll help some. Look at this little hosta right here. It's beginning to be a big hosta and that one there also up pretty much. This little little one right here called my niece's attention. Uh, she asked me what it was, which is just a little hosta, and it'll fill that out and get a really fairly good size. It's I love this color in the garden. It's like little lights in the garden. This color and white both. Lots of pots that need to be filled that I haven't got anything in yet. But I like to save some of them for the uh, impatience for color. And this and the variegated grass is really growing up. All the pots under under these under the maple tree I'll want to fill up too but that'll kind of be a fun part even though it's work it's also a lot of fun the red bed trees are all opened up now and the bees were swarming them yesterday the honeybees Here's my my little haul from, uh, well, let's see, how many different nurseries actually. We went to Horse Creek and Ace. We went to um, Raw Seed and Feed in El Reno the other day when we were coming back from, this, from our daughter's home. And then... Let's see, there's one. We went to Walmart for a few things, but I'm going to go back there again. Uh, but I did want to, I got this pretty little yellow caliber choa at um, Horse Creek, and they didn't have the blue labelia, and I want to put those together. So I got that one from, from the Walmart nursery. And here's some more of that pretty variegated grass. I'll have to get a little bit of this out of here because I don't want it growing up and enough in front of her face to just take cover her up but I want to get all of these in the ground and I probably will wait until after our cold spell because you just never know how cold uh, it changes <laughs> daily pretty much uh, what the forecast that we know to be on the lookout but it may be 
Maybe it won't go all the way down to freezing this time. It won't be long till the roses are blooming. So now we're in the back. Uh, the, this is the back red bud that my sister gave me when it was just a tiny little thing uh, growing up in her yard from her red bud tree. And then uh, we have clematis just coming, greening up everywhere. Look, there's a big old bud. So definitely I'm hoping we do not get a freeze now. Look at these pretty tulips. And all this front yard, all the way back to the back side of this little storage building, we have totally cleaned out on this side. We did this. Oh, it went so much faster with our daughter helping us. And she, I think she might feel as tired as we do. She's been sleeping a little later, she said, than she normally does. But, and we cleaned out all of this side, uh, all the way back to the back fence. The pretty um, pear blooms, pear tree blooms are, are opening up and they're pretty white. And just, the garden is just coming right along. All of this, this whole area we cleaned out. Um, there's some open area here that doesn't have anything in it and that's where I will plant my dahlias uh, as soon as we can get around to that. I'll, and danger of frost is gone. I'll plant those in all this area where you don't see anything. I love the dahlias even enough to, to uh, dig them up. <laughs> in the fall every fall and replant them every spring but they're just those big dinner plate dahlias most of them some of them um, are are just the regular size but they're dahlias what can i say they're beautiful so uh this is another clematis coming up here um this one was called princess diana when it blooms it's a little pink, kind of a, a bell-shaped flower. Uh, there's some more of the tulips coming up. Looks like the dianthus are beginning to bloom. Again, there's some more clematis going up this trellis. So I love the clematis. I don't have a whole lot of that's just really reached its full growth yet but this one certainly has this one is called well this down at the bottom of it is a also a miniature rose but you can see right in there where the uh, clematis is and then it grows right on up all the way up the trellis and it will fill out I'm pretty sure it always does and then bloom and just be beautiful probably by Mother's Day not sure what this little plant is. I, I really don't know if it's a weed or a plant. I've planted some things here, but that's a vine that I really could have planted it there as a vine too, thinking it would go up this Rose of Sharon tree that's actually beginning to show its little green leaves. The golden carrier bush is so filled out, so pretty. Oh, I was thinking that we'd already finished this part, but actually I still need to clean out this part just from the, the little border over there to that pear tree. But all this, this will have to be taken, at least some of that off, maybe all of it, and let it start over again pretty little candy tuft. That's probably the biggest row I have of it before it just fades away again. And remember when I walked just down this, this little back uh, path 
oh my, it was horrible, but now it's all cleared out. Our daughter and I, and I did this part while my husband, he's not been slacking off either. He's been helping us in other areas. He usually takes the toughest jobs, as a matter of fact. So, um, but there's clematis growing up, up here to that outside fence where I've got to clear that out some, but the clematis is coming up, everything is cleaned out, um, from the irises over here on this side, to, um, all the daylilies and peonies or peonies over here on this side. Looks like a whole total different uh, place than it did before. <laughs> the, this is the grapevine and it's got little buds on it that will open up to leaves before very long. And then this is the blackberry. <laughs> And that's as far as we can go without getting into this nasty stuff <laughs> where we still got old dead debris. This has to be cleaned out every year and every year it's such a dreaded chore. <laughs> the older I get, the more dreaded it is, I think. But, um, but we'll get this done. It won't be too awfully long. The little uh, catkins on the pussy willow are going away. It won't be long till they'll all be gone, but it'll unfurl its pretty green leaves and still be pretty for the rest of the season. And this little thing here, I've got to still clean it out. I've got something coming up in there. I'm going to wait and see what that is, I think. Um, but I've definitely got to get all that other stuff out of there. Still haven't got the stump out, but that'll be happening before too awfully long. My husband's going to wait till his brother comes and helps him with that because he has a better saw, a bigger saw. And so, look at this poor little clematis here growing up, reaching the sky. And I'll probably wrap that around and fold it in until it's more uh, evenly around this little umbrella trellis. This is the lilac bush and it's beginning to open a bit too. This little clematis that I was saying I wasn't sure how I wanted to trim it uh, because the top was all green and the stem going up to it was totally bare and, and uh, brown but actually it went ahead a bunch of it went ahead and greened up so I just trimmed off the dead part and and it's looking good. <laughs> this is my other one I was telling you about. I'm not sure what this is, but I know I planted it there. I just got to re try to remember what it was I planted there, but it's pretty. Got a bud on this clematis. See my, see my um, shadow in there. See so if I can do that, or you can just see the pretty bud on the clematis. And then look at these buds on this. Um, on this peony here. Big, pretty buds, and there's another clematis bud, so it won't be too long before we're starting to have, there's some more of that flower, <laughs> before we're starting to have flowers in the garden, rather than just the buds off the trees, but, but uh, I'm not complaining about that. That looks beautiful to me, just the tree. Uh, buds. Let me go over here and get some of this red bud also. <laughs> so that's that's been looking great. Just the buds and now the it, the buds are open on the red bud and just looking great. I know they don't last long before it just turns all green again but But for that little bit of time, proclaiming spring and just letting us know it's it's here, that's just a wonderful thing. Today is April the 10th, 
and yesterday, April the 9th, we finished up cleaning the garden out from the old debris from last year. So that's the hardest job. That's the job that I dread the most. But right now, it's just looking so good. And I'm just so happy. It's like you get a whole new lease on life when you get a dreaded chore finished. This was some of the last part that we cleaned out. And our oldest daughter has gone back home. I'm going to go over to this golden carrier again because it's just so full of bloom and so pretty. And then I'm going to take you back over to the the last area that we cleaned. So this is the last little area that I I needed to clean out and we've got it got it cleaned out so that feels good. There's a lot of things I still need to do like this little bird is <laughs> needs to be re-glued so he won't be hanging down so far and there's a lot of things I need to re-glue and re um, foam fill and just several different things that need to be cleaned cleaned up but I feel like we've got a wonderful start now I, th I think it's one of the later times I've got the garden cleaned out but spring just came late this year oh look at our pussy willow now it's just almost all green there's a very little bit of the pussy willows left one more time and I'm hoping it doesn't freeze I don't think it's um, for in the forecast for us I think it's going to get down in the 40s and maybe even in the 30s but I I'm not thinking that they're I think the actual fro frost or freeze is going to be farther north I hope that's the case and not not here after so much is green. I would hate to lose all this much, but it's happened before. And I'm seeing a little part I didn't get cleaned out. Of course, this won't take very long. And also there's another little Harkara or Coral Bells piece of um, paper flying through there. But, um, I'll want to move this one because it was under the rain tree and now it won't have shade until we get another tree growing up here. But there's all kinds of things that still need to be taken care of uh, like this. I'll still need to kind of work it down in through its little trellis so it'll be prettier. And then all the little things that we took out from under the rain tree need to be put somewhere where they'll be pretty instead of just piled in a heap over there and then of course we'll start planting and transplanting and watering and it'll be a busy busy summer it always is in the garden but I just love every single day that we can come out and see a, a new bloom in the garden got some more of that vinca that um, vining vinca I also did uh, go around my little uh, pyramid, or meant for a strawberry, a strawberry pyramid, but I've got vinca vine in it. But I went all the way around to it, and so none of it's sticking over its bounds right at the moment, which I'm sure it will do again. Having our daughter help us with the garden just really was wonderful because it it got done so much quicker and it's just so so good to be out here enjoying it and she said she really enjoyed it the weather was beautiful but we certainly went to sleep very tired remind me of Loretta Lynn's song at night we'd sleep because we were tired <laughs> That little butterfly is not going to open its wings. Had it all zoned in there. 
I see over here another little um, thing I was going to get on here too. It's a hosta. Uh, this one right back here. Right there. It's called white feather because it comes up just almost white. Let me get over here where I can get still and zero in on it a bit so you can see those little they were little nebbins, but they're all unfurled now, looking pretty. I tried this in one of my pots, and it didn't make it one year, so I thought, I'm going to get that established in the ground first, and then I'll see if I can move a piece of it to the pot. And then right there beside it, look. The little bleeding hearts. I also looked for my white bleeding heart and I don't know if it's really here. This might possibly be one, but I'm not sure. But if it is, I need to move it because this um, this is Widow's Tears. And I did not know it would take over. I thought it would just let things grow up through it, but it seems to be taking over that little bleeding hard and I will want that out of there and so it can stand on its own and then I'll probably move some of this it's just getting too thick and if it's going to uh, be invasive enough to destroy something else I, I probably don't want it here but it is a very pretty little uh, it's a ball but when it blooms it's got a very pretty little flower on it but it it looks like even my I'm seeing my sedum right down there. And of course, this is a clematis, and that sedum is kind of looking like it's being choked out too. So I'll have to redo this little area at some point soon. The herca or coral bells has grown quite a bit since uh, it was it's been out, and I've got a post of it, and now it's got some height there too. And of course they don't always even make it through uh, the summer because they they don't like the heat so they just kind of disappear until next spring. But sometimes since they are protected and have the, that pear tree gives it shade and, and it just gets protected enough to go ahead and stay there sometime through the summer. Oh, candy tuff was looking so good. I had to get a little shot of it. It'll bloom for quite some time. Then it'll turn all green also. I don't know if I got our little cherry tree in bloom. But it's got some pretty sweet little blooms on it now too. It's a very small tree as yet. And usually the birds get all the cherries before we do. The lilacs are opening up more. They're not open yet, but their buds are so big from a distance they almost look like they are blooms. And I noticed another little tulip over here. I hadn't noticed it may have been blooming for a while, but this is the first time I've noticed this pretty little creamsicle colored tulip. I missed it at one time last season thought oh that would be pretty in that little pot and I was right but I still cannot remember what this is I hope I can figure it out at some point look at this little clematis it's got a bed there there's one and there's one right there So I'm definitely hoping, and this is wisteria coming out on this, uh, this almost never blooms for me. I need to switch it to a different kind, I think. Uh, but at least it's got pretty green on it right now. I saw a little wren over in this area, but I don't know if she was 
picking out a nest or just looking for nesting material. I hope she nests in the yard and I can get pictures of her going in and out of her nest. We got some pretty pictures of the young ones last year on here on the 2018 posts. And I was going to say, my husband saw a hummingbird. So he saw the first hummingbird this year. I haven't seen one yet. I got this little area cleaned out too and right down here is where I want to to get some of this sedum. I think this is called Little Miss Sunshine Sedum. It has a yellow flower in June but I it's pretty at just all the time. It looks like little green rosettes and I'm going to uh, get some starts from it to put in my pots in the front. At least that's my my plan. I see a iris bed right there. There's still so much to do, but oh, it's so wonderful just to enjoy it too. While the weather is nice, while we can, it, the wind has calmed down a bit. Uh, it was up to probably 40 miles per hour today, and in some places, thankfully not here, it was 60 up to 65 miles an hour. So that can get rough on the garden and everything in it. There's lots of pots to still fill uh, in the front, but we'll begin the planting and get that kind of stuff done. That's usually fun for me. I love to put all the plants together and see what kind of container gardens I can come up with. And this front row of little small pots is is where, at least if I can get it focus in a little better than that, these little small pots right in the center there that just go up. And you can see there is a little bit of that sedum in some of the pots, but I want to get them where they're back to full and lush and, and hopefully they'll come back each year. They did for a while until we got those late freezes that just kind of um, did away with that part. <laughs> But I think I'll get that going again. I was going to put, at first, put the impatience in there for color, but I just like the little ones better. They just had that uniform feeling of having the same thing all the way up it. And then I put in the pots in front of it, I put uh, color, mostly impatience. Probably I love impatience and coleus. If you've seen any of the posts, you know that probably but uh, I just love them for color and for the shade they do so wonderfully as well as the coleus do well in a lot of those do well in the sun another project is to redo my fairy gardens as far as to paint everything I want to paint everything I've picked a pale green color 
and I want to put everything that I'm using for the fairy garden in uh, the green. Let me pick this little squirrel up right here. But I want to put those all in the same color green so they'll look more like they all belong together and I think that'll be prettier if I have some time, find some time to do that. The pretty forsythias are definitely going, going for the season. It won't be long now. They'll all be green. You can see all that green and, and the yellow is getting way more sparse and soon they'll just be green. Uh, if you want to trim your forsythias, I've learned to do it just right after they bloom. Right when they turn green, just trim them back if you want them trimmed, which I usually do trim mine because they're close to that little road right out front and also because they're close to, there's a little area that I mow in between the road and my yard and I like to keep them out of that so that I can mow without stooping down or moving uh, Forsythia bushes, branches. I guess I should tell you the reasoning behind that, just trimming them then and not, not later on in the summer or in the fall is because they set their bud for those little green, uh, yellow. They set that in the, well actually they begin setting it as soon as they finish flowering. They set that bud for next year so you don't want to trim it off if you want to see it next year. I always want to see it next year.